Okay, this is a bit too cheery. It's about to take a dark turn. Oh boy. Onwards and downwards. I like that. Right, off you go. Get out. My gap for the night. Something down there. Mad. <laughs> Easy now. Don't get sucked in. Don't get sucked in. Oh my god, he's gonna get grabbed. Oh god, imagine that. <laughs> hey! I know that name. Behold! Rio! Nope. <laughs> Why are those people waving at us? Can't be. <laughs> it's you two. No. Whoa. We're here. How can we be up there? We're still together in 10 years. No need to sound so surprised. <laughs> Talk to them. We could say hi to future us. How cool is that? Uh, no, best not really best. Not. Yeah. Things get complicated very quickly. See, way better than Rio. Rio doesn't have a big mining thing. We're not going to have a look, are we? Let's go and have a look. <laughs> Come on, you two. Amy, you could lose it. Cost a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's been in or out of the perimeter between last night and... No, what's that? It's quite the accent. Anyway, it's over here. <laughs> I like this. He's gonna get caught up in something else. Go on then, Rory. No unauthorized personnel. That means go right in <laughs> for the doctor. Sonicking and entering. Totally different. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. But when we went to Barry and Kalalin, I just wasn't there. Gone. Oh. Get it, got Body, sucked in, right? Coffin. Everything on the surface, the grave was untouched. No signs of it having been messed with. <laughs> From the I'm bottom. Sorry, I don't understand. And blue grass. Oh, please. <laughs> have you always been this disgusting? No. That's recent. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Amy, don't get sucked in now. With this steam, is that a good thing? It knows we're here. It's attacking. The ground's attacking. Us. <laughs> that, that's not possible. Out of circumstances, I'd suggest. <laughs> oh no, of course it had to be one, right? I'm not gonna let go. Oh boy. What's pulling me? What is under the earth? I don't want to suffocate under there. Amy, concentrate. Don't you give up! I think she'll get pulled in, but she's not gonna die. Maybe she'll find the other guy down there. Some sugar? Oh. For the tea? Sorry? In your tea. Mum's asking. There's only one explanation as far as I can see. <laughs> What's that then? The grave tea people. Devour them whole. Mm. No trace. They didn't steal the body from above. They couldn't have got it from the sides. Only other thing is... Below. It in from underneath. It is. We've eliminated the impossible. Whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. Sorry? Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> Got the audio book. Because while you've been drilling down, they've been drilling up. Somebody else has been drilling up. Amy? Where's Amy? Yeah. Get everyone inside the church. She was taken. Into the earth. How? Why didn't you stop it? I tried. I promise. I tried. Well, you should have tried harder. I'll find Amy. I'll keep you all safe. I promise. Come on, please. I need you alongside me. Yes. He seems familiar, the dad. Exactly as I say, from this second onwards, <laughs> because we are running out of time. Is that Craster from Game of Thrones? If anything moves, we'll know. It's Craster, yeah, Game of Thrones. I was gonna say, he even sounds so familiar. What are those? And as I say, every little helps. No, no weapons. It's not the way I do things. Cricket bat. But you said we're supposed to be defending ourselves. I'm asking nicely. Put them away. <laughs> oh, she's gonna sneak one, yeah. 
lovely place to grow out round here. Suppose. I want to live in a city one day. As soon as I'm old enough, I'll be off. I was the same where I grew up. Ha! <laughs> Did you get away? Yeah. Do you ever miss it? So much. Hmm. Have you met monsters before? Yeah. You scared of them? No, they're scared of me. <laughs> Will you really get my dad back? No question. I left my headphones at home. Easy now. Him and kids? <laughs> it's so strange to see him. <laughs> As a nice person. You Sonic it. It doesn't do wood. That is rubbish. Oh, I don't guess the Sonic. <laughs> ah, the kid. Where's Elliot? Who counted him back in? Who saw him last? I did. Where is he? He said he was going to get headphones. You let him go? Ooh. He was out there on his own. Jesus. I mean, it's some sort of alien, kind of like Predator. <laughs> oh, through the grave? Oh. It's like a fish man. Reptile fish man. Oh, he just got stung. Whoa, look at that. Cold blood. <laughs> Whoa, wait. Whoa, oh God. Can anyone hear me? I'm alive in here. Let me out. Really? Well, yeah, I could tell it was a female. Lovely mode of travel, geothermal currents projecting you up through a network of tunnels. <laughs> Just mind if I see. Oh, I do hate to monologue. Give us a bit back. How many are you? <laughs> I'm the last of my species. Because I'm the last of my species, and I know how it sits in a heart. So don't insult me. Hmm. Question is, what wake you now? We were attacked. Ooh. The drill. This land is ours. We lived here long before the apes. Doesn't give you automatic rights to it now, I'm afraid. Mm. Humans won't give up the planet. From their point of view, you're the invaders. Your drill was threatening their settlement. You have to be the best of humanity. And what if mm. they come back? Shouldn't we be examining this creature? Dissecting it, finding its weak points? No dissecting, no examining. We return their hostage, they return ours. Nobody gets harmed if you are the best you can be. If. <laughs> no way. It's. But but that's. This is. <laughs> <laughs> what does it do? Everything. Is this what it does? I'm not doing anything. We've been hijacked. I can't stop it. He's getting sucked in. They're putting the TARDIS down into the earth. Shall I tell you what's really going to happen, apes? Oh boy. One of you will kill me. My death shall ignite a war. <clears throat> oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh boy. Is she about to get dissected? Or is that the plan? That's so creepy. One small tribe. Yeah. Oh. Maybe a dozen? Or more? An army, uh. perhaps. Jeez. Maybe more than a dozen. Maybe more like an entire civilization living <laughs> beneath the earth. Okay, right then. Uh, now, you know, the, the, 
I mean, I guess I kind of lost track of time, but it being a two-parter really kind of caught me off guard. I just kind of felt like it was one of those, that it was going to be one of those, you know, one and done episodes, right? Uh, a standalone episode, perhaps. Uh, that's the feeling I was getting given uh, the, you know, uh, the story that's presented here and perhaps the quality of the episode because you know if I'm being honest not the strongest episode not the strongest episode that that was actually not the greatest episode so that episode um didn't do much for me didn't do much for me um if I'm being honest I mean of course it certainly had a collection of great moments throughout the episode right it's kind of sprinkled in there um, and, you know, I, I like the focus, uh, some of the things that are brought into focus in this episode, um, you know, be it the, the doctor's relationship with Rory, him and how he's around children. And I really did like that aspect quite a bit. Uh, it's a great scene, him and Elliot, right? Um, you see that his demeanor is completely different um, as he addresses this young child. So, you know, I saw this really, uh, really early on up front in the 11th hour that he has a connection with children, that he knows how to be around children, that he is able to put them at ease, right? Um, more of that here. Though, of course, there's also, you know, I say that, but then on the other end, there's a bit of a slip up on his end, right? And, you know, Ambrose, rightfully so, kind of calls him out on it, right? Um, he kind of let Elliot slip out. Now, you know, of course, that's not his intention, but, you know, the fact that he was kind of uh, able to let that slip his mind or, you know, he thought that was all right. Um, yeah, you know, he slipped up there. And that kind of brings up this notion of him kind of being out of it at times, right? Um, you know, like I mentioned, it was really noticeable that he's kind of like the most alien of the, the doctors I've seen so far. Um, the most detached, perhaps, from human emotions. Uh, and you see some of that at play here, once again, I think, that he is out of it. That sometimes he's not able to clock these situations. Um, you know, the Elliot situation being an example of that. Um, again, there's no malice. He just, you know, he just didn't even think of that possibility. Okay, maybe I should stop this child from going outside. Perhaps he thought that Elliot uh, is quite a capable child after having the conversation. You see that this doctor does kind of possess the, the, the ability to be just as... Uh, helpless or every bit as helpless and fallible as his human companions, right? You see earlier in the episode, uh, in, in the first half of the episode, he loses uh, Amy yet again, right? And then later he goes on to lose Elliot. And again, like I mentioned, Ambrose, his mother, rightfully called him out for his handling of that situation, right? Um, how I believe she said, how could you let him go out there on his own? Uh, and you see, you see in the doctor's reaction, he's realizing, oh, okay, yeah, maybe I should have been a bit more vigilant in that situation, right? And you see that the doctor didn't even kind of realize that Elliot's missing until Ambrose kind of brings him up, right? Who was the last person to see him? Uh, and, you know, it kind of hits him then. Uh, you see, I thought it was some great acting on display. Um, but, you know, in that sense, uh, that monologue, that lecture, essentially, that he gives to the humans in the church, um, you know, that... If you are your best selves, uh, this situation can be handled, right? But you need to be your best selves. And, you know, he's kind of telling them uh, how to, you know, conduct themselves in this situation. I mean, it was a great moment. Uh, I thought some great acting on display. But, you know, he certainly played his part in creating this crisis, right? He had a part to play in this, of course. Uh, so I thought, I thought, you know, that scene... Maybe you could even argue that it is maybe a bit hypocritical of the doctor to, you know, give out this rousing speech or lecture, uh, especially to someone like Ambrose, right? How to conduct yourself in this crisis. Um, I don't know. Uh, you know, like I said, this episode was, wasn't the greatest for me and it didn't do much for me. So I'm trying to kind of, um, I'm still trying to, you know, dig into some of these things and provide some sort of insight or analysis on the episode. So yeah, but there's a really great moment. There's actually a really great moment in this episode. It's of him and Rory, right? Rory is, of course, uh, as expected, quite angry that, you know, Amy's gone again and he doesn't even know if she's alive or not. But, you know, I think it became clear to the doctor, okay, uh, they're doing something. I mean, they showed us that the one really creepy surgeon, uh, homo uh, reptile or, you know, earthlings, as uh, the doctor mentioned, uh, slowly approaching uh, Amy to dissect her, right? Um, though, of course, you have to be dead to be dissected, right? So um, I'm not sure the exact term, 
Um, but yeah, you know, uh, Mo had it done. I mean, Mo seems to be fine at the moment, but again, you know, he's been through that traumatic experience and Amy um, is about to go through that experience as well. I doubt, I doubt it's going to happen, of course, uh, but let's see, let's see. Um, but you know, I'm noticing that there is a bit of damsel in distress element to Amy's character, though I'm sure she'll be prominently featured in the next episode. Uh, especially, especially since the doctor is down there now, alongside um, Nesreen, who I thought was a decent supporting character. I like how the doctor kind of won her over, and now she's kind of like a fangirl of his, almost. She's, or at least she's really uh, impressed. I love that moment she comes into the TARDIS, and I was, you know, of course, uh, the iconic line, right? Oh, it's bigger on the inside, but uh, I loved, I loved Matt Smith in that moment. You know, that giddy smile on his face, just, you know, he, you see that he's legitimately excited to see her reaction or anyone's reaction uh, of the TARDIS the first time they come in. So I thought that was a great little moment there, fun moment there. But the fact that Amy kind of sits this one out for the most part, uh, for most of the episode, it gives us a chance to have the Rory and Doctor partnership, right? And uh, kind of develop that relationship a bit further. You see that Rory, you know, maybe he maybe he has respect for the Doctor, but he's not completely infatuated with the Doctor. You know, he keeps it real. He keeps it real. He's not shy about kind of calling the Doctor out. And I like that. I really do like that. I appreciate that approach. You see that he gets quite angry, uh, yells at him, tells him that he could have tried harder to save Amy. Uh, but you know, that moment, I thought that was a great moment as well, because you see the Doctor genuinely really, you know, wanted Rory to be on his side. He needed Rory to be on his side. He needed Rory to be calm and to help him out. I thought he was genuinely asking him to help him, right? I need you. I thought he meant that. And I think Matt Smith really sold that. And you see that the doctor has realized that, you know, as a companion, Rory is quite important to him. But yeah, I, I continue to really appreciate Rory um, and the, the approach of that character in this dynamic. Um, again, you know, he's not infatuated with the Doctor. He might have respect for the Doctor, but he's not afraid to call him out. He's done it on a few occasions now, and I, I, I like that. You know, I really do like that. Um, you don't always want people just to be, you know, uh, these puppies following the Doctor, right? You do need characters like Rory. You do need uh, people like Ambrose, who are able to call out the Doctor, right? Who are able to make him realize uh, of his mistakes sometime, sometimes, sorry. But yeah, speaking of Ambrose and side characters, um, yeah, I'd say there's a decent collection of side characters in this supporting cast. Uh, you know, Tony, I recognize from Game of Thrones, Craster. So let's see, I've got Craster, I've got Jorah Mormont, I've got Jojen Reed, I've got Viserys Targaryen, and I can't remember the name, but he was the guy from the House of the Undying, right? <laughs> he played one of the monks back in Tooth and Claw, I believe. So yeah, you know, the Game of Thrones cast keeps expanding. I'm sure I'll see more down the line. Uh, so always a pleasant sight. Um, but yeah, it was a bit strange to see that actor, the one who is so unlikable as Craster in Game of Thrones, play a decent person in this. Though, by the end of the episode, it kind of feels like he is about to have a bit of a shift, given that he might be on a limited amount of time. You know, he, he, took, he took a sting and it seems to be spreading. And this um, reptile uh, creature, I can't remember the exact name of the species, but the main reptile character uh, in this episode, Alaya, I believe, uh, she knows, right? And I think she's uh, alluding to uh, Tony because she knows she stung Tony and maybe that's going to infect him and mess with him. And she knows that he's going to come back and kill her perhaps. Though, you know, part of me also thought maybe Rory could be... Uh, the one to do it, if it happens, you know, again, bit of a misdirect, perhaps, you know, there's a shot of all three and, you know, Rory's looking quite defensive there, quite concerned, but I think she meant Tony. In that sense, maybe there is a, a setup here for a different type of interrogation in the next episode, right? Maybe Tony might take a bit of a uh, dark approach, right? Um, you know, and speaking of interrogation, um, though it was more of a, you know, sit down and uh, talk things out, I really appreciated that scene uh, of the Doctor and Elia, right? Um, you know, he's being really diplomatic. And you see that in true Doctor fashion, he actually appreciates uh, their ingenuity, right? Uh, and he calls her beautiful as he takes the mask off, a beautiful creature. Uh, though, of course, you know, this whole kind of also leans into that notion or that concept of, you know, the natives and the conquerors, right? Uh, you know, this uh, reptilian species has been there long before the humans. You see that there is a lot of resentment <laughs> through these reptilian creatures, um, that, that there is a bit of xenophobic nature about them, uh, certainly about Elia, 
Um, so yeah, you know, uh, she didn't, you know, the doctor gave her every chance. Doctor took quite a civil approach, but you know, she's dead set on kind of, uh, you know, going after the humans and, uh, there being this grand old war that's going to be initiated because of her death. Um, again, but in that sense, you know, their home or it was the it was the the drill that disrupted everything, right? They kind of made the first approach. But yeah, you know, the doctor made a great point. You know, from their point of view, it's the humans, the people that are drilling that are kind of disrupting them, right? And that are kind of agitating them. Though, of course, you know, these humans had no idea, right? They have no idea there's a reptilian civilization down there, uh, quite a massive one from that cliffhanger. So yeah, you know, um, it's all really a matter of perspective. I mean, yes, in the first half of the episode, they kind of set them up as these, you know, really scary, um, dangerous uh, individuals, or not individuals, creatures. But by the end of the episode, you can see from, you can see things from their perspective as well, right? They're just trying to protect um, their home, right? So yeah, you know, uh, it's all a matter of perspective. Um, and you see the doctor kind of, you know, brings us in every now and then going back to Eccleston, going back to David Tennant's doctor. Um, yeah, you know, he's not always on the human side. Uh, he is able to see perspective, uh, from both sides. Oh, also, you know, there's that great moment, uh, a bit of a setup for something perhaps down the line, maybe, um, you know, future Amy and Rory kind of show up. Now, you know, the doctor certainly confirmed that it's uh, Rory and Amy, right? And he gets a close look at them. He has no reason to lie, does he? Uh, and you see that, you know, uh, the red and blue is quite present, right? Rory has a blue jacket on, I believe, and Amy had the red jacket on. Uh, so let's see if that is something that plays a part down the line. Because, you know, there is setup there. There is setup earlier. Um, now, that setup is more up to interpretation, right? Um, and I'm speaking of the, you know, the doctor's jacket kind of getting left behind and then the doctor approaching Amy, totally different demeanor. He has his jacket on. So there, you know, my thought or my theory there was that perhaps this is uh, a doctor from a different time, kind of coming back to that time, essentially. Um, I think all the hints are kind of there for that, right? Again, you know, the change in demeanor, uh, asking her really specific questions. Uh, of course, he's got his jacket on and the next scene right after it, the jacket isn't there. So there is set up there for this kind of situation, right? The, you know, the doctor potentially going back in time uh, to a specific moment in time. And then now in this episode, you kind of have the setup for Amy and Rory from 10 years in the future coming back to this moment. Um, so yeah. Yeah, let's see if anything comes of it. And again, there's quite a few noticeable low angle shots. Um, so, you know, that's certainly a prominent feature of this season. But yeah, I think that's about it for this one. Um, again, not the greatest episode. Uh, didn't do much for me. I mean, it certainly had a collection of great moments, um, as I just mentioned. And I guess in that sense, I could say that season five is a bit of a mixed bag so far, right? I mean, there's certainly some fantastic episodes. Uh, of course, that River Song two-parter, um, you know, Amy's Choice, 11th Hour, um, there's a lot of great stuff, but then, you know, there's also some not so good stuff. Um, I'd say this episode is probably the one I would rank the lowest. But yeah, that's about it for this one. Uh, again, I, you know, I don't like to be negative, uh, but that's just my honest take on this episode. Um, but yeah, you know, if you enjoyed it, uh, consider dropping a like, consider dropping some comments, give me your thoughts. If you're interested in early access to the next episode, perhaps, or maybe even full length for any of the Doctor Who episodes, and it is timer based, of course, consider checking out the Patreon page and the link is in the description in the pinned comment. Um, yeah. And if you're into social media, consider checking out my Twitter page. Uh, and the link for that is also in the description and the pinned comment. Right then, thank you for joining me for this one and thank you for your time. And I hope to see you again soon for the next one. Until then, take it easy. Thank you.